Hello and welcome to this CGTN live broadcast. I'm Yang Chengxi in Shanghai, and this is my colleague Gong Zhe right beside me. And we are now at the Mo、uh, Mobile World Conference 2019. As you can see, there are a lot of people here today. Today, there are a lot of excitement, and we are now at the、uh, Huawei booth, Huawei venue, and there are a lot of people here to see their latest 5G technology. And we are. We have a very special feature here today.、Uh, in a people in a venue that's so crowded, people worry about very weak signals, and that's a worry for us journalists too. When we do one of these live broadcasts, we worry about whether there will be some lag in the video, whether we will break off、uh, sometime in the middle, have weak signals.、Uh, but we're not supposed to worry about that today because we are now using a 5G smartphone that is that is very fast. Has very low latency, and we should not break off in the middle of our lives, and and and, and it should make our lives a lot easier. Do you think? Yeah. Right, right,、uh, and it is enabled by one of one of the cell phones provided by Huawei. It's a 5G smartphone. I think it's going to be a, a bit more expensive in the future, but would you, would you pay that extra amount for a 5G phone? Do you think? I would say、uh, the the data per like like the money per data like the ever、uh, like the money I would spend on every gigabyte of data should be lower, should should get slow, should, should get lower, no, that, even lower. Than, yeah, that's what happened with 4G when it replaced 3G, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that happened before, and that should happen next time. Well, I、right. think so. And also, we're lucky to be joined by Mr. Li Xin,、uh, who is the、uh, Chief CMO, Chief Communications Officer for、uh, Huawei Digital Indoors uh, uh, System. So, first of all, could you explain to us what a digital indoor system is?、Uh, hello, everyone. So, first, I would like to introduce what is a digital indoor system. Actually,、uh, we know that、uh, outside we see a lot of macro station, but、uh, it mainly covers the、uh, outside, like the. Uh, roads, the park, but for the indoor, the big building, actually we need some like an indoor network. So currently, Huawei offer digital indoor system is a, a indoor a Pico network, which can offer the 5G signal.、Yeah. So we are actually covered by the indoor system yes. today. Yes. Yes. Currently,、uh, in these venues, actually we have several the indoor、uh, Pico sites. Uh, which covers the 5G signal. Currently, we cooperate with uh, uh, China Mobile to work for in these、uh, venues to offer the 5G with a digital indoor system.、Uh -huh. So we are now at the、uh, Huawei venue. There are a lot of people here today, very excited to see what Huawei has to offer. Could you walk us around and show、yeah. us、uh, what you are showcasing here today? Yeah. Actually, like, for example, yeah. For example, yeah. these th th these all look very technical to me. So would、yeah. you explain? What、Actually, this is a joint、uh, innovation. So as we know that、uh, 5G is like a telecommunication technology, but also we are cooperate with、uh, AI, the latest、uh, technology for the、uh, big data for the analytics, and it can help the totally telecom、uh, network to reduce、uh, OPEX, reduce the human workload. So we use a machine to have an auto drive network.、Uh, that's this is for autonomous driving. Yes, this is a cross technology. Uh, innovation. One is 5G. One is、uh, artificial intelligence. So they combine together. They can increase a lot the network efficiency. We walk while we talk.、Um, so I think autonomous driving is really a combination of both internet and processing power, right?、Yeah. Although you ha you have AI, but you also need to have a very fast and stable internet for that AI to function to to in a in a self driving car. Do you think? Yes, actually, the artificial intelligence we deploy. One part is in the side, and another part is in the network, so in the cloud.、Yeah. So actually, this is also a hybrid technology with the end-to-end -end network. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And also, we see over there a lot of a lot of people surrounding this excavator machine-looking thing, and we are seeing actual excavator there doing work. So, could you explain to us what this is? So, Ongjie, do you want do you want to take it from here? Yeah, this is yeah. We have we have just explained a lot about the 5G about Huawei's technology, and we would really love to see 5G in action. Okay, and remember, we are now broadcasting this video to you with a 5G phone connected to the 5G network in China in Shanghai. So now let's see what 5G can do in action. So what I can see here is a. Yeah, it's more like a construction vehicle, but it's a remote control. So as you know, that five、uh, G is not only 
work uh, for the people's communication, but also for a lot of uh, vertical industry. So this is uh, one of the use case. Is for example, actually, when you have some like uh, mining uh, works or the construction vehicles, the environment is quite dangerous and complex. So actually, if we can use a remote control, we can uh, avoid the people to be injured in this kind of dangerous work. And also, for example, here, one people working in the remote control room, and he can control more than 1,000 kilometers now in Henan and in the mining uh, work. So actually, this will also improve the working efficiency. Yeah. So, okay, you mean this, uh, so he's now operating a real excavator. Yes, real excavator and it's real time. So you can see that in the video, actually he's control one of the, this construction machine. Yeah. Okay, so he's now, he's now controlling the machine yeah. that is 1,000 kilometers away. Yes. In yes. another province. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you can see that the latency in his screen and in the uh, real scenario is quite uh, uh, syn synchronized. Yeah. Okay, so, so he's now like digging rock yes. from a mountain and then put into this truck. Yes, right. yes. So this is because a 5G network can have a very big bandwidth sending back the high definition video and it's a very low latency. So you can see that his uh, action is quite uh, synchronized with uh, what is in the real uh, scenario, the mining construction. Okay, so is it okay for me to talk with this yes, operator? Yes, sure. Okay. I really want to know how he feels operating something 1,000 kilometers away. Okay. I don't know if he speaks English. Hello. He says there's basically no latency. Um, and he feels very good. So, uh, why should he be very good? Okay, yeah. He said he feels very comfortable operating, operating his excavator here because there's no shaking anymore. Because if, if he's stand if he's sitting inside that, that excavator, then it would feel like uh, he would feel the shaking. It would feel the noise of this of this excavator operating. But now he's in the room. He's he's in MWC, so there is no noise anymore. Maybe uh, maybe our noise, and uh, uh, he's he's now uh, he's now operating in a safe area, in a safe room. So there will be nothing to worry about, right? So so I think this is actually something cool. And you know maybe he can operate more. So is it possible for him to operate multiple yes, excavators? Yes, yes. And this kind of uh, mode, I think, is uh, very important because uh, we like some of the senior worker to control this kind of machine. But if one people can remotely control, maybe one machine in Henan and one machine in other province, so actually it will improve a lot for this working efficiency. Yeah. And also so you mean not only controlling not just uh, one position, but in, in one location, so maybe in two provinces. Yes, yes. Okay. So we can use always a senior worker to do this kind of a, a dangerous or very complex work. Okay, yeah. so let me put it like this. So if I'm sitting in Japan, then I can control uh, uh, something, uh, an excavator in yeah. Korea maybe. Yes, maybe also in Australia. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that sounds really amazing now. Very senior workers to do this kind of, a group of this work. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So what do we have here? So 5G enabling industries, I really want to know what this is all about. It seems like there is some interacting demonstration here. So there is a crane showing the mining and is this acting like a key? I see. I see here, this is the CCTV building. Yes, yes, we're very familiar with that. Yeah, this is our headquarter building in Shanghai. So I would, uh, should, should I put it here? Happens, huh? Yeah. So, I don't think there is responsive. I don't think this is responsive now. So should I put it like, okay. Now it's like 5G in CCTV. You see oh. our colleague there? 
and, um, and, sh and it shows what 5G can do for uh, TV and media entertainment, uh, namely like 4K or 8K live broadcast in, in, in a very high definition studio. So we might need to put on more makeup in the future to make up for imperfections. Right, right. So and let, let, yeah, let's see what happens with other industries. Okay, let's try something else. So, yeah, yeah, what, which one should would I mean, you would you like to see? I mean, for example, we just saw an excavator. So, what ha what happens if we uh, combine five G with uh, mining? Mining. Let's see. Okay. So it's supposed to make it more uh, make it safer, as we saw, because everything could be manless. We we don't have to be on the site. Uh, the workers don't have to be on the site. So it eliminates. Uh, any possibility of human casualties should any accidents occur so, and it could make it greener and more efficient because everything is done by uh, highly efficient machines instead of uh, manual uh, all people labor uh, that would allow for some uh, some human error I think and there are a lot of possibilities right so we we would we would also like to interview another senior executive of Huawei who will talk to us about some more of uh, future applications for 5G. So we're happy to be joined by Mr. Peng Honghua, who is the Chief Communications Officer for Huawei's wireless network. Is that correct? Right. We, we just saw many promising uh, applications. For example, we saw the uh, the, uh, the autonomous, not, not autonomous, but remote control excavator yeah. machine over there. So the mantra uh, of the Huawei booth here is really 5G is on, right? right? We used to talk about what 5G could do. Now we're seeing what 5G is doing now. So what do you think are some of the more promising applications of 5G in the future? Well, you're right, 5G is on. So now we are doing the 5G uh, the live broadcasting so this is one promising the application for time being besides we are able to see from the smartphone the users as long as they got the 5g smartphone they are able to got a lot of 5g applications as well for example cloud gaming normally when we using the traditional game you have to download and you install and play but with 5g you just play on the cloud so that will simplify the all the equipment but improve the user's experiences so this is from the user experiences from the smartphone the second as i said you have to see a lot of uh, application in the industrial the so remote control it's not only in the mine but also in the hospital in the train station in the airport so we believe as we create a lot of uh, the 5g technology so we are able to got uh, more applications in all the industry to change our life Ah, so 5G video game, I know that's something that I personally would be very interested in. Yeah. Um, and also, we know that a lot of uh, companies are showcasing their 5G applications here, but Huawei is really um, one of the stars of the show here at MWC 20, 2019. So one of the talking points when people talk about 5G solutions from Huawei is that you're able to provide such a quality with a very affordable price. So how do you achieve something like that with innovation? So today 5G is on, but you know Huawei started the 5G's uh, analysis and study from the year in the 2009, 10 years ago. So among the 10 years, we contribute to uh, the CGPP about uh, more than 18,000 contributions. And also Huawei hold 20% of the essential 5G essential patents. Just uh, by investing more than 4 billion US dollars on R&D, so we are able to achieve a lot of technology breakthrough. So today, we in China, we introduce some hardware or the product, the Maxi Mimo, and this is a product, a commercial product, we able to deploy for the 5G network. Besides, in some uh, uh, technology like uh, the PA technology, the theater, and even some engineering, we got some breakthrough so as we are able to provide in the affordable product globally. So, for example, uh, today in this venue, we are covered by 5G signal that's provided by Huawei, isn't yeah. it? We see a little bo white boxes on, on the wall. We see several in this venue already. So what do they do and how, how, how does it help with the uh, uh, 5G coverage here in this venue? So you see, for the indoor solution, we need 5G as well. 
And uh, we also think about for indoor, we need to hide those the box or the station, um, base station to invisible. So by we need to do some innovation so as we take some technology like uh, antenna technology and also some chipset. So as we are able to make a very small box able to support 5G and 4G simultaneously. So this is the box we deployed in the venue to provide the 5G coverage. And uh, internally, we take in the, the digital indoor system. This is the this system we are able to provide 5G for indoor. Very small box, very integrated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Pang. Thank you very much for your explanation. Thank you. All right, we'll look around uh, this venue a little bit more. So yeah. we'll see you around. Enjoy. Yes. Thank you. Right, if you follow me over here, we can see some, uh, some more applications. And Mr. Lee will explain some more of that uh, to us. So uh, we, we see a lot of uh, data on the wall. So could you, could you share with us what do they mean? Because we see a lot of these graphs and, and, and technical explanations. So uh, how, how do we, as ordinary people, how should we understand uh, uh, what benefits could these technology bring? Yeah, actually uh, 5G can offer uh, many two scenario. One thing is to improve the people's experience. For example, the uh, internet browsing or other experience like a uh, high definition video. And another is to enable all the industry to improve the efficiency and totally to change currently the producing uh, process, this kind of thing. So actually you can see that for 5G it's not just a small logo in your smartphone, mm -hmm. but also it could be in the trucks or it could be in some like uh, machines mm -hmm. and also in your producing in the medicine in the uh, transport hub so actually this is uh, uh, 5g is quite deep into the industries in different areas mm -hmm. so first is to replace the fixed network with wireless mm -hmm. and second is to use uh, ultra low latency mm -hmm. to introduce a uh, capability of a uh, real-time uh, coordination of all the communication, so mm -hmm. these kind of things. So this really ties into the concept of Internet of Everything, right? Yes, yes. So actually 5G is an enabler, not just for people communication, but also for the industry. For example, machine to machine, and also for some like a uh, uh, computer visioning, and combined with like uh, artificial intelligence, this kind of uh, technology to improve a lot the whole efficiency of the, the network and also the industries. Right. And we also see here people are playing video games that, 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 that he's supposed to be skiing, right? So this yeah. is enabled by 5G signal. Yes. Actually, you know, uh, recently a lot of this kind of VR, they are connected with this network. But actually, with 5G, we can reduce a lot for the capex, for the investment. So actually, this can offer us with a very experience. You just to uh, experience, for example, remotely in uh, Europe, what is a skill, a skill, and also maybe some like a remote uh, education. So like uh, people in uh, the teacher in Beijing, but you in Shanghai, you mm. can still learn this kind ah. of skiing. Yeah. Ah. So I could, I, could, I could envision a more exciting future already. So uh, anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for showing us yeah. around. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a, have a great time at uh, MWC 2019. Yeah, OK, we're, we're moving on. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to uh, another venue to check out some other exciting stuff at the uh, Mobile World Conference. Hongzhou, you want to take it from here? Okay, yeah. So as we go in forward to another venue, uh, because this, you know, G the, this WMC Asia is really enormous, covers enormous area. So it would take a few minutes for us to tr to go to another place. So uh, during this uh, the, the, this time, we have a little a little video clip to show you to talk about. So. What is Huawei doing with 5G, and why? Uh, and so maybe why Huawei is not not that evil as many people think, right? <laughs> okay, so let's put in the clip. This is the Hongqiao train station in Shanghai, one of the busiest in China. Usually, in a packed place like this, or at a concert or other crowded venue, people worry about weak signals. But that concern will be a thing of the past when this station is covered by 5G in the future. The new network allows for up to a million mobile connections within just one single square kilometer. Also, it's fast. It is really fast. And for those who are curious, here's a trending video of just how fast 5G could be on your phone.
This video gained over 6 million views in two days in China. And suddenly, the future feels not so far away anymore. Imagine driverless cars, efficient robots, remote precise surgeries, and countless other applications enabled by the fast speed and low latency. By 2025, half of the US and a quarter of China's mobile connections will be made through 5G. It is the next big thing. And this is where it gets complicated. We need to talk about the H word, Huawei. Apart from making smartphones, the company also makes telecommunications equipment. It hosts the most 5G patents and claims to be ahead of its competitors by as much as 18 months. Millions of people around the globe have learned how to pronounce this curiously spelled Chinese brand in recent weeks. Huawei. 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 It's actually pronounced Huawei. Huawei. But unfortunately, Huawei. many got to know about it from news clips like this. I hope all of you up in the gallery are not using a Huawei or a ZTE product. If you are, you might want to go out and buy a different one. These companies are dangerous to our national security and to your privacy. That sounds severe. And the U.S. has banned its companies from doing business with Huawei, claiming it might install backdoors in their product for espionage. Now, that would be understandable if there was solid evidence. The American government still has yet to publish any credible proof to back it up. Yet, every allegation sounded more real than the last one. They are used for espionage. They are part of the supply chain, whether it's routers or anything else. They embed stuff in there that could be used to spy against us, not just for national security. They, that's how they steal corporate secrets. Now, actually, this rhetoric is hardly new. With that amount of distrust from Western countries, Huawei had offered the source codes of their products for thorough inspections by government agencies from countries such as Great Britain, Germany, and Canada since 2012. And to this day, there has been no evidence of any backdoor used for espionage. Uh, we're about to go live. On May the 30th, British mobile carrier EE launched the first commercial 5G network in Great Britain using Huawei equipment. That is what is going to enable us to do the first live broadcast over 5G. European countries have refused to ban Huawei despite heavy pressure from Washington to do so. Why? Because no country wants to lose out on the global 5G race. The cost of building this new network is much higher than 4G because 5G requires 100 times more radio transmitters. It only makes sense to choose a company that experts say offers 5G solutions with the best price point in the market. Many European countries like Britain and the Netherlands say that while they will not use Huawei for their 5G network cores, they will still use their transmitters. And what Huawei needs to do is to work closely with suppliers and regulators. And that's not happening with America at least for now. We need to take these measures to develop and use uniform cybersecurity standards. Use these mechanisms to assess risk objectively and mm. based on evidence so that we can have conformance programs so we can prove which products are worthy of trust. That's how we address the risk. That's how we are all safer in cyberspace. In the United States, the kinds of individuals in government who would normally talk with us are not really open to talk with us, talking with us to help address real cybersecurity issues. Experts say that leaves Huawei between a rock and a hard place. It is suspect but not able to prove its innocence. And that has reinforced the idea that the U.S. is persecuting Huawei not just because of security issues, but as a way to maintain its supremacy in technology. In fact, similar cases have happened before. Consider Alstom, the French industrial conglomerate. The U.S. Justice Department in 2010 used an extraterritorial law to investigate the company for alleged corruption. Alstom's energy business was later acquired by America's GE, despite competing bids from Germany and Japan. Some analysts suspected that the investigation might have influenced the acquisition. Former Alstom executive Frederick Perucci, who was arrested by the U.S. in 2013 and sent to jail, later called the episode politically sensitive dealmaking and underground economic warfare. Europe needs to react, China needs to react, otherwise we are going to live in a world uh, basically where uh, the United States decide uh, who should trade with whom. Now, with the Huawei ban continuing, collateral damage is beginning to surface. The company's equipment has been used in the U.S. for years. Huawei supplies technology to about 40 small carriers across rural America. 
Replacing that could cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and farmers are facing the danger of losing their mobile service, which they rely on every day to monitor their environment. Nobody in their right mind would shut down a network and shut down public safety. Sometimes I equate it to like uh, flying in a jet with two engines, and you want to replace one of the engines while you're at 30,000 feet. Uh, probably not a real good idea. The U.S. government has offered a poll of $700 million to mitigate the situation, but some experts say that's not nearly enough. That's not to mention that Huawei has been a big buyer of American products. The company spent $70 billion U.S. dollars to purchase parts in 2018, and $11 billion of that came from the U.S. So much of the U.S. tech industry is intertwined with the companies in China. So as much as, the, as this may seem like it's about U.S. tech supremacy, these policies from the U.S. perspective are, are really misguided. This is not like steel in terms of being able to shut out one, one supplier. Analysts say the cost will likely be passed down to ordinary consumers. Yet, there's a much deeper long-term risk at play here. Experts say that the U.S. government's intervention in the telecom sector sets a dangerous precedent in America, and that could be a warning call for other companies around the world. By interfering in a peacetime world in the private profitable interactions between Huawei and American companies, every major company in the world now associates a new risk with doing business with American companies. Of course, companies including Huawei could eventually reduce their interdependence with American firms, but that is not at all ideal in a globalized market. So, if the current American administration's mentality is Huawei, no way, the people are losing out on more than just a smartphone. Okay, welcome back to our live. So we're now doing a live stream on at in Shanghai. We're at the Mobile World Congress 2019 and in Shanghai. So uh, this congress is so different because we're now using a 5G smartphone to do this live stream. This is never like like before. So uh, we're now at the China Mobile booth. So China Mobile is uh, has the has the largest popular has the largest user base in China, and we're really excited to see they have this 5G demonstration here. I'm really curious about what this is all about. So I will have this Yang Chengxi to ask to, to ask China Mobile what's happening. Right, we're at the China Mobile booth, and I think China Mobile is now currently the biggest uh, mobile operator by subscriber in the world right now. And it's recently got a 5G uh, approval, a, a, a 5G approval from yeah, from the MIT this month, yes. right? And so the 5G future is, I think, just around the corner. And to know some something more about that, we're joined by uh, Huang Yuhong, who is the head of the China Mobile Research Institute. So, uh, so what we're seeing in the background is pretty, pretty interesting. So, can you talk to us about uh, the coverage of 5G, for example, in Shanghai, in our city right now? Okay, so I'm very glad to have this chance to introduce. Uh, we just have um, Shanghai. Um, so this is a map of Shanghai over yeah. there. So actually, we have already built more than 1,000 5G base station in Shanghai, covering uh, a lot of key area. So here in the uh, demonstration booths, uh, the exhibition area, and uh, uh, a lot of key uh, street and uh, um, commercial area already have 5G coverage. So uh, we plan uh, this year, uh, in the second quarter of this year, we will build more than 5,000 uh, 5G base stations. So uh, the main area of uh, Shanghai will have 5G. Uh, next year, we believe the 5G coverage will same as 4G. So we believe um, most people in Shanghai will enjoy 5G next year. Right, because we are all expecting by 2020, uh, most of China, at least in the big cities, will be covered by 5G. So is it very challenging because I heard uh, 5G needs a lot more transmitters? Uh, yes, uh, 5G to build a comprehensive 5G network in China to have a huge coverage is really a, a challenge because we need not only build millions uh, base stations, 
We also need to be, uh, build a, a new transportation network, core network, and upgrade our customer care system, network management system. So uh, to face this challenge, China Mobile just launched 5G Plus Action Plan. So but, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, 5G Action Plan, um, there are key points. One is 5G plus 4G. Um, because China Mobile now has the largest 4G network in the world, so uh, we also have a lot of experience building the TDD uh, network. So we will reuse our experience and reuse our 4G sites, reuse our uh, 5G, uh, 4G network co to compensate uh, 5G, uh, to cooperate with 5G. So um, with this, we can have more capable to set up a big network. And uh, the second point is 5G plus new technology like uh, AI, IoT, cloud, data, uh, big data, um, uh, uh, mobile edge computing, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 MEC technology. Um, with this kind of uh, converged 5G, converged with new technology, we think we are, the 5G will be more capable, not only high speed, but also a lot of uh, capable like uh, customized service uh, and uh, data service, cloud service. So uh, it will give us capable to serve our customer a, a lot of new uh, value added service and not only for individual customer but also for enterprise uh, customer. The third one is 5G plus ecology. That means uh, 5G development cannot be done by single company, single industry or single country. It needs the global uh, player, the industry, um, and also a cross-industry cooperation. Uh, with this, we believe we have the confidence that to uh, have the capable to build a high performance, uh, high quality, wide coverage with a reasonable uh, price to give us uh, our customer service uh, uh, to have them enjoy the uh, ex uh, how to say the the extreme, yeah, uh, experience of five uh, G. Right, right, I, and I and I and I just recently know that uh, a a cell phone mobile operator needs a lot of suppliers in their network, and that is something called interoperability, and that's something very important. That is very important in the telecommunication industry. And today we're seeing a lot of people that's very interested in what China Mobile has to offer. And a lot of talk on the internet about 5G and what it's going to be. So when we upgraded from 3G to 4G, a lot of people were concerned about, will it be more expensive? Will, 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 will 5G be more expensive than 4G? So what, how do you understand that? Um, I think um, the goal for us is to provide our customer um, uh, the, the super uh, experience with more uh, value-added service. So we believe, um, with, I just mentioned, uh, with uh, cooperation with the whole industry, don't worry about the price. And we always support, uh, give our customer service with reasonable price, with uh, new, value, uh, new value, so don't worry about it. Right. Don't worry about the price. I think that's a takeaway for me uh, here at China Mobile. Do we have something? Uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Um, here we can uh, have an uh, interactive with uh, our 5G uh, live network. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. okay. Oh, here we have a, a live 5G network. Uh, the lady is in the car. And uh, we can uh, have a dialogue with her. So actually, oh, wow. actually, this is uh, this uh, video Hello. is based on five G. So uh -huh. you can see it's very clear, uh -huh. and uh, uh, the the motion is uh, uh, very uh, fast. So I mean, it's impressive in in a venue like this with very weak four G signal. You can still have very high definition five uh, G enabled image with low latency, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is. Uh, value for of 5G I can give you a fast speed and a low latency. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we are in the 5G live experience. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
I can I can sense the uh, latency is pretty low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's very pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right, uh, we see we see a 5G enabled uh, live, and that I think that will be the new normal for us reporters in the future, don't you think? Uh, I think uh, I really want to buy a car like that in like within like two years maybe. And you know uh, what I noticed from this demonstration is that this uh, video chat uh, uh, speed is really fast because when her ba when she wave her hands. You can see in the video chat of yeah, her waving the hand. Synchronized. Yeah, it's yeah. almost synchronized. I don't, uh, as, as of me, I'm a core gamer, but I can't notice if there isn't any delay happening. And uh, yeah, this is really amazing. As a gamer, uh, so I really want to know if uh, in the near future I can use 5G network to boost my gaming experience. And uh, so, so where are we now heading for? Well, we are we are heading to uh, the organ the booth that belongs to the uh, organizer of the uh, Mobile World Conference. We're going to uh, interview, hopefully, the organizer about the scale of, of this year and really the star of the show this year, which is 5G. We see a lot of uh, different companies are showcasing uh, their competing 5G technologies and solutions. And then uh, we're, we're going to interview the uh, the head. I think, I think one of the executives of the GSMA, which is the organizer of Mobile World Conference, about uh, the 5G showcase uh, this year. So anyway, I'm very excited to buy a 5G like, transmi transmitter like, to, at my home because I, I read about it. It's something that you really need for 5G to work because you, you, when you have 4G, you, you only need to like, connect to, to, to a wire and, and that's connected to a 4G tower, but with 5G, the signal does not tra transfer very far. You need, you really need to have a box within your home that's connected to the 5G tower. So there are, there is going to be a lot more. I heard it's sometime, uh, somewhere around a hundred times more uh, transmitter yeah, that's, uh, that's required for 5G to work. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, maybe buy buy one of these transmitters to be installed in our home uh, and maybe it's in our office. I heard uh, like every floor of of, of each build, office building really need one transmitter to for 5G to work. So that's why I asked about whether it would be a very big challenge uh, to realize a comprehensive coverage of 5G because you really need a lot more tra transmitters. And, uh, the, uh, and, the, and the CMO of Huawei Wireless told me uh, that they, they are confident that something like this could be achieved because they will use some of the existing uh, 4G uh, infrastructure out there, uh, like and towers? build yeah yeah and build on them, and transform them into 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 5G towers. I yeah, think I think like that could 5G, work. The 5G module is more or less like an add-on to the existing 4G hardware. Yeah, yeah but you st I think uh, again you still need to uh, buy uh, install extra transmitters at at your uh, at your work at your in your home yeah, too yeah. so uh, that that's going to be a challenge a in like the future it, it's uh, i don't know how how uh, if you own a large house because when you if your house is so large it has multiple floors one wi-fi uh, a router would not work anymore yeah. uh, they can't cover everywhere in the house so you need some wi-fi signal repeaters mm -hmm. that's more fun i think that's uh, a, 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 bit, a bit similar to 5G network because they're now on the similar frequency, so they may function much the same. Right. Now we are now at the uh, GSMA booth. Let's see what they have to offer. Hi, I'm with CGTN. Ah, uh, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Can Can you talk about uh, some of the? Uh, uh, what could we expect from uh, the, the MWC this year and what, what GSMA expect from it? Certainly, this year we're seeing uh, the theme of intelligent connectivity and we're demonstrating the power of 5G, IoT and big data. And this year we're seeing a lot of the technologies coming together and demonstrating the value of multiple technologies. Can you, can you walk Show us around? Right. So I think really 5G is the star of uh, this year's show, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because uh, this is the first time we've had 5G networks live at the event. And we've been showing a number of applications. Uh, we've had a remote surgery. Uh, remote surgery. And if you look over here, 
we've got uh, Huawei are showing uh, the importance of uh, cloud VR, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, that's a key technology that needs to be understood, is that by putting all the intelligence in the cloud, we can access it through 5G networks and make all the devices work much more efficiently, much faster, more data, more timely. And they're showing, for example, the ability to do advanced gaming mm -hmm. without the need for local hardware. Mm -hmm. So the cost of gaming is a lot lower. Mm -hmm. uh, we're showing collaborative, uh, where basically you can meet other people in, in a virtual space and avatar yourself and actually participate, work together. And I think collaborative and bringing data together is a key theme. You'll see a number of demonstrations where they're beginning to master the need to get data from so many different things. For example, if you're trying to uh, look at a smart city and you want to bring together data from traffic, from weather, from locations, from building sites, you begin to run a city in a smarter way. But it's about bringing all the data together and understanding it. And that's what we're beginning to show here on the Innovation City. Right, and in this year's uh, MWC, we, we heard, hear a lot of talk about what 5G could do in the future and what 5G is starting to do right now. And we see such an evolution of 5G from one year to another year, right? Yep. Building on last year, uh, and this year 5G seems much, much more tangible now. And do, what do you think next year would be? Or how do you think this will evolve? In well, I think what we're, we're beginning to understand is that the 5G era is about flexibility of networks rather than just speed and low latency. So what we're seeing now is a family of technologies which come together and work together to solve many different problems. For example, uh, we're showing over there with China Mobile, showing how we use sensors in soil for agriculture and showing how farmers can grow much better quality crops by basically monitoring the air temperature, the, the, the weather, how the, how the soil is and bringing all that data together. And that's using a range of technologies called low power technologies and they're part of the family. So with low power technologies, these devices have battery lives of like 10 years. So you can put sensors in many more places and network them together much more efficiently. And that's an aspect of 5G a lot of people haven't really thought about, is its flexibility of networks. Right. Uh, so I, I also want to talk about some of the... Uh, I also want to talk about some of the uh, issues that people are concerned about 5G and, fi and the 5G's future. Uh, especially in today's uh, climate, uh, global uh, geopolitical climate. Do you think that 5G is still going to advance as quickly as people hoped it would be a few years back? Oh, uh, very much so, because I think people have seen the technologies overlay the technology we currently have. And I think what people realize now that this is evolutionary. So we're not expecting everything to stop and then start all over again. What you're doing, you're seeing the networks gradually evolve. And I think what's so clever about the networks is the way they can evolve without reinventing every cell site. You're just gradually upgrading the networks. So at the moment, you know, you're seeing 5G come in place with new radio, but the millimeter wave will come a little bit later. So the networks gradually change. And by gradually developing it, it's much more cost effective and you can affect change more efficiently. So I have no fears that currently that things are changing. In fact, I think you'll see deployments happening earlier because mm. of that. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for thank your you. insight. And I, and I expect to uh, interview you for my TV story later when, when I finish my, my, I my life right there. And thank you for coming. Okay, I'll, I'll come back. I'll Cheers. see you later. Cheers. Bye. Right, last but not least, we are showing you that's something that's pretty pretty close to my life at least because we are we are arriving at the booth that belong to the China Media Group which uh, CGTN is a subsidiary of so do you want to do you want to take it from here do you do you do you think what do you think we can expect from here oh is this a live footage I think so because you can see here so there is here is a girl in front of the screen this giant screen I have checked this is an 8k screen if 
so if, a, if this is a normal LED screen, if I stand here, I can see pixels on the screen, right? There's little lights, but I have to, now I have to come this close to notice there is pixel here. So this is an 8K screen, and you, you saw the girl just now, right? She's on the screen, and now you can see the, she, see the girl in reality because this is, a live, this is a live stream, so they're not using cable to transmit this live stream anymore. So even for 8K high-definition video, they can use the camera and then to shoot the video and use 5G wireless signal to transfer this image to the giant screen. So this is a new... So, um, uh, we're now, I think the China Media Group is now inviting uh, visitors to try this technology one by one. You can see people are queued up and there is a, uh, there is a female engineer operating the machine here. So they're, now, they're even reading news here, you can see. So they're taking videos, so maybe I should not make such a big noise. Okay, so you can see there is this script reader and this now, this is the next girl. So this is the next girl. So this is the... Uh, so although this is in the MWC, but this, uh, this whole set is the same to CCTV Mandarin channel uh, because uh, they have made the same thing. And oh, she's saying hello to our live stream. Cool. And yeah, we're now inviting visitors, everyone to experience, uh, to, to, to try to be an anchor, to be a news anchor, because this is the same set as the, uh, our anchor room. And this is very interesting. This is some of our colleagues' daily life, but not everybody's uh, experience with that. So uh, we're now inviting people to do this. Okay. Oh, they can take they can take photos. Look, they have the previous photos they have taken. Maybe I need to put really close, read, right? So you see this guy. This guy here is acting like a news anchor. Cool. You have this, and with all these CCTV, uh, how to say package. We call also in news industry. We call this package. You can see the CCTV2 logo here, just like our CGTN logo, and there is this new media logo here. That is that is the Chinese of CCTV business. So this is featuring the. Okay, they're now doing. Cool. Okay, they're they're asking us to back off. <laughs> okay, now you can see this is the China Media Group's live stream, and let's see how she performs this on the big screen. Yeah, you can see the four logos, CCTV, yeah, CNR, CRI, and CGT are now all combined into a, to, a, to the China Media Group. And we're now, so let's see her on the big screen. Let's have a check to see what she looks like on the big screen. I would say pretty good. I would say she's doing pretty good. What do you think? What do you looks, think? Look, looks legit. Yeah, yeah. Looks, looks pretty good. I, I mean, you you, you want to sit on uh, the anchor desk? Yeah, at, uh, I wanted to. At some point. Oh. <laughs> yeah, at some point. I mean, both, point? both both today or, or in the future, figuratively okay, yeah. and well, literally. Well, I used to be a news anchor in the past, oh. so, uh, but only in the TV station in my hometown. Oh, I think this guy's even better. <laughs> Check out this guy. I think this guy's even better. This is more because uh, because in China a square face is more preferred to be news uh, to be news anchor I think, right? I think guys with with like more a uh, square face will be more preferred. Well, I, I'm probably doomed because yeah. like I have I've got such a long face. <laughs> but maybe but so maybe the fashion would change <laughs> because you know not everybody uh, uh, love this kind of style anymore. So maybe there are some younger people that would prefer our faces. I, mean, I, could, I could understand because like a, a square face conveys more authority visually, yeah. right? Right, it's something something that's taught in uh, J school. Yeah, probably. Yes. Um, so this is uh, this is the China Media Group's booth, and they're now transmitting. So maybe we can check their cables or devices. Okay. To see. Let's see what they're using. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what they're using. I would say if it is 5G, that definitely be China Mobile because we have this deep cooperation with them. Okay. There are even more 8K. Video stream. Oh, there it is too crowded for us to showcase this. I think uh, we have this 5G plus 4K, tr 4K transmission and 8K transmission, both on 5G, both on 5G wireless. I, I think we it should come really close. I want to say on 4G, it's still a little bit fragmented. Yeah, it's still a little bit fragmented. But on, I would say let's let's see what happens on 8K. 
This is real. I can't tell anymore. I literally cannot tell if this is something on the screen based on pixels. Because even if I, I hold really close, oh, hey, the flower is fallen. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I'm going to rush to uh, a, a TV interview right now. So uh, I think you carry on the uh, live broadcast from from here. So I uh, wish you good luck. You can probably show us some show, show us about the cool stuff about this uh, 5G smartphone. But that's all for me here. I'm going to rush to an interview. So uh, it's very very nice hosting uh, co-hosting uh, this live broadcast here today at MWC. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay. Cool. That's okay. Applause for it. Yang Chengxi for doing this live stream. You can see he's from the channel, the CGTN TV channel, so he's very great at interviewing people, as you have just saw before. So let's see, they put up the, they put up the flower again. Now they're watering them. Okay, this is really, this is really interesting stuff because you know, for a normal screen, on, no matter on a phone or on a TV. So if you hold up really close, you will see the little square pixels. But now I hold. However, I hold close to this, I cannot see the, the pixels anymore. Actually, if I put it closer, it looks more like the reality. So I think 8K on this size is really vivid. We can now actually use vivid, literally use vivid to describe this situation. And uh, this is too crowded. Maybe it's not, it, it's not really possible for us to, to see their equipments right now, but as you may not see, uh, as I travel to Fuzhou to see the uh, to see the 8K camera uh, over there, it's really interesting because uh, in the news in the video news industry, we use this called SDI cable to transmit our video signal. But on 8K camera, there are four plugs. You need to plug in four similar cables to enable just single live stream. So this is um, this is really an advancement in technology because uh, in the past there is no such oh oh sorry <laughs> someone's getting by okay so there is no such technology before to to transmit there is no chip that can process this massive amount of this massive amount of of video signals so I think. It's not only the 5G is taking us to the future of communication. Other kinds of technology have all contributed to, to create a better future for us. So maybe I think we can just, uh, we can just uh, stop the, the, the live stream right now. To, so I would, travel the, uh, I would travel through all these booths in, the, uh, in this MWC Asia in Shanghai, and I will uh, bring you my, my opinion on what the future might look like. So, um, so, so stay tuned with CGTN, with our app, maybe on Facebook, maybe on YouTube. So we will bring you more coverage about this event and I will tell you more about what our future will be like with these new technologies. Again, let's make sure you, you have understand this. We are now doing this live stream. I'm talking with you on the 5G network. No matter what, what kind of network you are on, I am doing, I am doing this. Um, I'm doing the 5G, it's 5G on my side, so maybe I can take a picture of the cameraman, of the phone he's using, here, as you can see, I will show you the picture, I'll show you the picture, this is our cameraman using his phone, you can notice this is a Huawei, maybe you, if you're familiar with gadgets, you will know this is a Huawei Mate, a Mate 20X, but it is different because there is a little, because there is this little 5G signal here. So this is the 5G phone instead of just nor the normal phone we use, like this phone in my hand. So this is different, it's a totally different thing. Um, but uh, actually our technology has not catched up has not catched up with this uh, latest technology yet. So, our, so maybe on your side, you see the video is still on normal quality, but on my side, it, it looks really amazing. So when I check on this, so maybe, um, so maybe you, you hold on to see this screen, to see them, and I will take a picture of, our, uh, of the phone's UI to let you see what uh, the 5G phone might look like. So it may take a few seconds for me to, to, to take this photo. Uh, please wait for me a little bit. Okay. Let's see the China Mobile 5G. Okay. Let's see if the love if the photo is okay. It's a bit blurred, but you can understand. 
Okay, it's a little bit blurred, but you can understand this. So look at look at this on my phone. I don't know if the the rotation is okay. Here you can see that this China Mobile 5G. So uh, by the signal bar on our phone, it's 4G, but now on this phone, it's 5G. And uh, you can see on my on my own phone, it's China Mobile 4G. Although there is a HD over there, but the signal says 4G. So this is totally different. Okay. So. Okay, so this is all the so this is everything we have for now on the live stream at GS at GSMA holding this MWC Asia in Shanghai. We will bring you more coverage about the latest technology that would change our life forever. And that is the end of live stream. So we will see you in a short time.